Joining us now from Bristol is Tony Gosling, historian and investigative journalist, for his take on the recent atrocities being committed by the Israeli regime in the besieged Gaza Strip. Hello, Tony. Hope you're safe and doing well there, pal. Your thoughts on what's been unfolding for going on 20 days now in the besieged Gaza Strip? Well, I mean, it's almost like we're observing here a kind of nuclear armed doomsday cult because the, everybody that gives them friendly uh, advice, the Israelis, like having a ceasefire, for example, uh, they just threaten them. Uh, and they, for example, turning on the Secretary General of the Uni United Nations, Guterres, and telling him that he should resign uh, for actually looking at a history book, for example. So, you know, th this it's extremely dangerous. We've got, and I, I know, it's, it's the Greater Israel Bloc in the uh, Knesset, which is really behind this, people like Amir Weitman, who, who is interesting to see that he is actually threatening Russia. And he's saying that Russia's proxies are behind this. He's, he's talking here about uh, Iran and Syria, etc. And so when they finish dealing uh, with the Palestinians, they're going to be coming for Russia. Uh, he said that on, on the RT, uh, Russian state media. Uh, so they're threatening, basically. Anybody that advises them that genocide might not be a good thing, you would think as a Jew, if he is a Jew, he would remember that sort of thing and he would take that advice that genocide is not a good thing. Uh, so, you know, we, I think the Arab countries you have know, been Tony, showing immense restraint under these circumstances. And it's funny, what you're saying it almost sounds like uh, state narcissism, not to listen to anyone, always think you're right, even when, to your point, history book is open in front of you and your faults are being pointed out to you with documentation and you basically well you want to defy everyone and everything that stops you from uh, reaching your objective no matter how illegal it is under international law well look many people have been uh, looking at this israeli behavior as madness i i don't see it as madness i see it as a strategy it's actually a strategy to uh, to create as much fear as possible. Obviously, there is a genuine fear here that uh, that with Arab countries being dragged into this, uh, and particularly with uh, with the United States possibly coming in, uh, the Russians, the Chinese coming in to try and sort this situation out. Uh, you know, the, the the consequences could be astronomical. We've also got the potential uh, of use of nuclear weapons by the Israelis if they feel that they are their state is threatened and it's almost as if they're daring the world uh, to uh, put them in the situation where they have to use those nuclear weapons so I mean it isn't madness it's a strategy I believe and a strategy to create a religious war a religious war is something we're quite familiar with here in the United Kingdom because we had one uh, over in Northern Ireland and only the thing is they're not really religious wars the idea is to frame it as a religious war in the world press and to the public. Whereas I lived in Northern Ireland back in the 1990s, and I can tell you it was nothing to do with the Catholics or the Protestants really wanting to fight. It was two powerful factions, both of them secular. Uh, one is the Loyalist faction and the British MI5, the British Army and Security Services, were behind much of the Loyalist terrorism there. Uh, and the largely secular Sinn Féin and IRA. So it was framed as a religious war. And I think this is one of the reasons, uh, you know, that the Brits I consider to be one of the people behind this. Obviously, Palestine was under British control. But the army uh, back at the end of the Second World War, the British army were getting killed by the Jewish terrorists uh, in, in a similar way to, the, to the, their behaving now against the Palestinians. And before we let you go, Tony, to what point do you feel the West will continue. I mean, is this indefinite? Is this basically? Is there? Um, is this a no hold, uh, no bars, uh, no hold on any? Basically, to what point are we going to be? I mean, if, if if the Israeli regime decides to go through with a complete displacement of Palestinians in northern Gaza and tries to annex that land, is the U.S. although and and, and London and uh, and Paris going to sit back? and let that take place if they decide to completely ethnically cleanse Gaza southward to the Sinai Peninsula. I mean, at what point do these Western leaders who back this regime say enough is enough, is that, or ever for that matter? Well, it, wasn't it interesting that the, uh, the horrific crime against the hospital last week with 500 deaths happened just before Biden arrived? And so he had to stand there with the Israeli leaders and 
almost pat them on the back. I think that was deliberate. It was an attempt, as you might get in the mafia, to uh, bring other people in on your crimes. So that is sort of spreading the blame. Uh, and he did a quite a good job. Biden, I don't think, is really concentrating and knows what what he's doing. But uh, <laughs> half the time, anyway. But look, the, you know, I, what annoys me more, more than anything else about this is we're trying to frame this in political and logical terms. Actually, we should be talking more, I think, about good and evil. Uh, the uh, behaviour of the Israelis, particularly lying all the way through this, uh, it, every almost every occasion, we've seen some sort of atrocity taking place. They're denying it. And uh, also lying, I believe, certainly the evidence I've seen, suggests that many of the hostages who were being held on the 7th of October were actually killed by uh, crossfire as the Israeli Defence Force tried to liberate them. So uh, I think they're lying all the way through. And this is the behaviour of an evil com uh, country. It's not the population. And this is one of the reasons we're not seeing a lot about the demonstrations going on in Tel Aviv against the IDF and the greater Israel political bloc uh, amongst the Zionists. There are many Zionists who are now coming out on the streets and saying, we have a dream here in Israel, and Netanyahu, you are destroying it. Of course, the man is a criminal. So I think it's important to frame this in terms of good and evil, and even to look at the, the plot uh, that Albert Pike back in 1871 framed to have world wars, and the final cataclysm would be between the nihilist posing as uh, the uh, religious Jews, uh, like Netanyahu, supposedly as a religious organization, but actually these are people are nihilists, trying to start a fake religious war in the Middle East and drag everyone into a third world war. So Pike is an interesting figure, and I think there's quite a few people, certainly amongst the Bedouin, who believe this very much, uh, but very few people in the West and other parts of the world understand that this may be part of a very long-term plan uh, to uh, bring about a global cataclysm which the New World Order, if you want, believes that they can actually frame the outcome uh, of that when it happens. And so that's what they're threatening to do. And I think that's why they shouldn't be considered as mad, but evil. Interesting take there. Thank you, Tony. Stay safe. Always a pleasure to pick your brain on stuff, especially this uh, recent atrocity here.